In this screencast, we're going to take a look at the ASPX pop-up control's new feature for 10.2. It's called Load Content Via Callback. And it allows you to delay loading of the content in the pop-up. Now you have a couple options to do this. The default behavior allows you to display and load that content when the pop-up window is first rendered. Now the other two new options allow you to delay that so that when the page is first loaded, so that the pop-up con window's contents starts immediately after the entire page has been loaded. Or you can do it on first show so that the pop-up window contents displays when the pop-up window is invoked for the first time. Now, in this screencast, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that by adding a button and a pop-up and a little button inside the pop-up to update that content. So let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is go to the design view and in the toolbox, I'm going to grab an ASPX button. Now, this is the button we're going to use to invoke the ASPX pop-up control. Now, I want this button to behave like a client-side button, so I'm going to remove the auto postback property, and I'm going to set the property name of the ASPX button, set its name, first of all, to show button, as well as call it show pop-up window. Now I need an ASPX pop-up control and you can find this under the DX 10.2 navigation and layout tab or category. I'll double click on the ASPX pop-up control. Now all we've done so far is added a button and a pop-up control. Now this pop-up control is displayed when something invokes it. So for now we're going to bind it to the ASPX button up here called show pop-up window. Now to do that you simply set a property in the ASPX pop-up control. So we'll set the pop-up element ID to show button. And I'm going to set up a couple other things, such as the header text, its content, as well as how the pop-up will be displayed. So the first thing I want to set up is the pop-up vertical alignment. Now I want to show this window from the bottom slides, which means that when I click the show pop-up button, the window will slide down as if to appear it's popping up from the button. I'm going to set the horizontal alignment to left sides so that it aligns to the left side of the button as well. It will give us a nice clean look as we're popping up the window from the button. Now let's set the header text. I'll set the header text to pop-up content updated. Now I want to set some items in the pop-up content area. So I'm going to go to the source view because I want to include a little server-side script that shows me the date and time. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll add a little space here. I'll start with the div tag to encapsulate it. Then I'll simply put in something like the content of this pop-up control is relevant to and put it in a, a time in bold area here and we'll simply call it I'll show the date time dot now to long time string. Now let's take a quick look at this in action. Now we have our pop-up button here. Now let's see if it got all the actions that we wanted to properly. So when I click it, ah, the pop-up window didn't actually show below. Now let's check the pop-up vertical alignment again. Now go back to the project here. Now I can see that I have bottom sides. Now what I wanted to do there is actually set it to below so that it shows the window from below. Now let's take a look at this again. Now when I click the show pop-up window, it shows the pop-up content right underneath and it's displaying a nice little drop down. Now one thing you'll notice is that the pop-up content is not actually updating this value and that's because we need to do a callback to update this. Now I want to do that by using a little button inside of the pop-up that allows us to update this content. So let's add that into a footer template area. Now let's go back to the design view. I'll go back to the pop-up control here, click on edit templates and go to the footer template. Now here I'm going to add another ASPX button which we can find in the DX 10.2 common controls. Now I want to disable auto pushback for this control as well to have it behave like a client control. And I'll set its text to update content and I'll set its name to the update button. Now we want to have the pop-up control update when we click this button here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a client-side event for its click property 
and I'm going to call the pop-up controls client side event which is called perform callback. Now I haven't given it a name yet but I'm going to be calling the pop-up control client pop-up control and I'm going to call it client side event which is perform callback. Now I'll simply copy this because I will need this name to give it as a client instance name for the ASPX pop-up control. Now I click OK. Now if we go back to the pop-up control, I'll end template editing here and let's give the pop-up control that instance, the client instance name that we just set. So I'll go to the client side properties here, set its client instance name to client pop-up control. Now, if you notice that we set the footer template, we're not, but we don't see it here. And that's because we also said you need to set another property which allows us to show that footer template area. So, to do that, scroll up to the appearance settings and click under show footer to true. Now, we can see our update content. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to show this button a little bit to the right here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the source here and just set a little property for the footer template area. and I'll simply set a style for this button. I'll have it float to the right side and I'll set a margin for three pixels around the button. Now let's just make sure that we can see that and yes we see that properly. Now the pop-up control looks a little bit too small so I'm going to resize it. Let's give to about 1284. That's pretty good right there. Now let's take a look at this in action. Now when I click the show pop-up button, I get the nice big window coming in from below of the button. Let's take a look at the new property because right now when I click show pop-up window, this content is being updated right away. So if I go back to the design here and click on the pop-up control and go to the load content property, we'll see that the load content via callback is set to none, which means that the content is rendered inside the pop-up window initially. Now that's the default behavior. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have it on first show, which means that when I first show the pop-up control window, that is when I want the content updated in here. So to do that, we simply set that property to on first show. Now, if I would have set it to on page load, then it would update that property when the page initially gets loaded. But this allows us a little bit delay of that process to load that content in there. Now, to further demonstrate that this is actually working, I'm going to go to the page load method I'm going to add a delay in here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the system.threading class and I'm going to just add a little delay here. About one second. Now this will help us demonstrate this property. Now let's take a quick look at this in action. Now when I click the show pop-up window we can see that delay happening because we set the load content via callback property to on first show as well as now when I click the update content the callback is still hitting that thread sleep. So in both instances we get the benefit of loading and updating this content via that callback. Thanks for watching.